What is up, my Yugi Bros? I'm your host, the RJBZ. Welcome to Yu Gi Oh! Business Casual. So, this format may actually be a first for one of my favorite cards in the game, my absolute favorite hand trap, DD Crow. In that, this may be the first format in living memory where DD Crow was a truly viable main deck option. Now, YCS Philly actually kind of preempted me on this. You'll see that the winning Madolce deck, piloted by Chris LeBanc, included a main deck copy of DD Crow, of all things. And the question is, why this format instead of all the previous formats in which there were matchups in which DD Crow was especially successful? Now, I think that the first explanation is, of course, that, that DD Crow actually doesn't really have a bad matchup, this format. DD Crow is pretty universally usable against the matchups you're going to be facing. You're, if you go against uh, Infernity, you can take out the Necromancer target. If you're going against Girgia, once you've taken the armor off the board, they're probably going to try and uh, put it back on the board with Mark II, which means you can then DD Crow it when they target it. Anyway, uh, against Mermails, they have Title and they have, um, what's it called? The, uh, the Gund. And then the, there are three matchups in, I th in which I think the DD Crow is especially useful. Uh, the least of all of them is uh, Madolce. Now, Madolce. Uh, has a lot of things that you, that that are fairly decent counters for them. A DD Crow is one of them, but it's kind of lower on the list. Maxi and Valor are also very good choices against Medulce's Valor, especially. However, DD Crow being useful against all of those other matchups universally, as opposed to Effect Valor and Maxi, in which you have to choose one or the other, can get rid of the Angeli Hootcake combos just as easily as Effect Valor or Maxi would. So the purpose of Max C in a lot of cases is to dissuade your opponent from co completing a play. And against Medulce's, that isn't going to be very useful for you unless you also have a Veiler to back it up or some way of, uh, some kind of uh, way of stopping OTKs because chances are they're going to OTK you. Chances are they're probably going to be operating under like wire tra wiretap or trap stun or something that will stop you from making trap plays. So Max C isn't going to be terribly useful for you against Medulce's in a lot of instances. Effect Veiler, however, will be, but it isn't useful against something uh, like, uh, what's it called, Dragon Rulers, which are the second big matchup that DD Crow is extremely good against, uh, that Maxi and Effect Veiler aren't necessarily, because if you Maxi against a Dragon Ruler deck, when the Dragon Ruler player summons a Dragon Ruler, they're just going to summon the Dragon Ruler and leave it there, because they don't care if you... If you you get to special summon again. They're just going to beat you down with that dragon ruler, and especially if they're running skill drain, then that's true. Um, and effect veiler is just absolutely, totally useless against them. But the really big matchup that DD Crow is important against is artifacts. Now, artifacts is like the hand cap, uh, hand trap killer deck, and it also has the added benefit of being able to take out back row, which means that it's very difficult to defend yourself against, especially with conventional means like Effect Veil or Max E, which are both basically useless against artifacts. You're probably going to get like one draw off of a Max C against artifacts, if even that. So Max e isn't going to be useful. Effect Veil is absolutely, totally uh, useless, except against like Marmalio, but that isn't even the, the biggest thing you have to worry about going against artifacts. But DD Crow blocks your moral to their moral tox effect, unless, of course, they hit the Sanctum button, in which case you're in trouble. But DD Crow, when they hit their moral talk, it goes to the grave. You can DD Crow that moral talk, and then guess what? They do not get that moral tox effect. You get to continue your plays, and they do not get disrupted as easily. There's also, um, if you combine DD Crow with Wiretap, you don't even have to worry about the Artifact Sanctum. You basically got it covered against the Artifact matchup because you're ready for basically anything. You're ready for their um, their Theosophy, their Sanctum, you're ready for the Trap Hole Nightmare or whatever Trap Hole thing they search with their Mermelio, and you're also ready for the Moral Talk play. The other nice thing about the Trap Trex variant is that you can take out the Mermelio when they target it with Dianaya, and then they're just left with a dead Dianaya that you're just probably going to run over next turn. So DD Crow is actually an exceptionally good card, this format, um, at least in comparison to the other hand traps, and especially in comparison to DD Crow's previous formats. This is just in my opinion, uh, but it is also really against, uh, good against Soul Charge, so that's just something to keep in mind. I'm sure that you guys have other opinions. I'd like to hear them in the comment section below. Meanwhile, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section. And of course, subscribe for more deck discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Meanwhile, thank you guys for watching Yu-Gi-Oh! on Business Casual. I am your host, the one, the only, the RJB0, and I... Got a jet. See you guys.